Hi, in a previous video we talked about different amplifier classes and I described how a class AB output stage works. If you haven't watched that video you should probably check that one out before continuing with this one because it um, provides some useful background. Now in a class AB output stage you have two devices and for low signals, for quiet signals that is, both devices are providing half of the load current each, so half of the current into the speaker. And when the signal passes a certain threshold set by the bias current, then one of the devices cuts off and the other um, provides the full load current. So there's two different operating regions. There's the class A region, which is where both devices are providing half of the current each. And there's the class B region where one is cut off and the other device is providing the full load current. And so there'll be some distortion in the transition between those two regions. And that distortion is called crossover distortion. So in this video, we're going to look at what that distortion looks like and what it sounds like. Here's my test setup. I've got a sine wave generator plugged into a 6L6 class AB amp and I'm measuring the bias current on a multimeter and the output signal into an 8 ohm dummy load on an oscilloscope. To start with I've got no global negative feedback and I've got the bias set at 5 milliamps which corresponds to 8% anode dissipation. This is a very cold setting. Having the bias set this low means that the class A region will be very small and the valves will cross over into class B even with very low signals. Here's a trace of the output signal measuring 15 volts peak to peak. As you can see there's a noticeable kink in the waveform. That's what crossover distortion looks like. Now look what happens when I add 11 dB of negative feedback. The kink doesn't quite go away but it's less severe. Now if I increase the bias to 30 milliamps you can see that the kink goes away. This is because the signal is now small enough relative to the bias current to stay within the class A region. If I increase the signal to 48 volts peak to peak it crosses over into class B and the kink reappears. Notice that it is less severe than before. Again adding negative feedback reduces the distortion a bit more but the kink is still visible. Now if I increase the bias to 40 milliamps, equivalent to 65% anode dissipation, you can see the sine wave is a bit cleaner than before, but there's still a slight kink if you look closely. And by adding negative feedback again, the kink is reduced. We almost have a perfect sine wave, but not quite. Anyway, enough oscilloscope traces, let's hear what crossover distortion actually sounds like. I'm going to compare the 5 milliamp bias setting to the 40 milliamp bias setting. So what did you think of the sound of crossover distortion? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, check me out on Instagram at Rajaniamps and check me out online at rajaniamps.com. Hope to see you next time.